Is Luke Skywalker going to show up in The Mandalorian? In the first season, I would have bet my collection of blue milk that the answer is no, but now? It certainly sounds like a possibility. With The Mandalorian really diving into reuniting Baby Yoda, I mean, sorry, Grogu, yeah, that's always going to be weird. Reuniting Grogu with the Jedi, wouldn't it make sense that the most famous Jedi alive at that time, who wants to rebuild the Jedi Order, would come knocking? If that's the case, who would be the best option to play Luke Skywalker in The Mandalorian? Well, I have some thoughts, so let's get into it right now. If Disney really wanted to bring Luke to The Mandalorian, there's one name that stands above the rest. Sebastian Stan, the Winter Soldier actor, does bear a striking resemblance to a young Mark Hamill, where it wouldn't strain credibility that much if Sebastian suddenly showed up with a green lightsaber. There's three big reasons why Sebastian Stan would work. For one, he's talented and recognizable enough, but not that recognizable where it's distracting. You know, you don't want a huge A-lister as Luke because that just feels wrong. Two, he has a great relationship with Disney with a solid supporting role in their other massive franchise, so I can see them trusting him with Luke's character. And three, I just want good things for Bucky since Cap passed him over and gave the shield to Sam. All right, that's not a great reason, but overall Sebastian Stan would be a good pick. To a lot of people, there really is no one else who could or should play Luke Skywalker other than Mark Hamill. It feels like his role. To some, that's just like casting someone else as Iron Man or even someone else as Han Solo. Wait. Uh, they already did that, and no one bothered to see that movie. And you know what? Why couldn't they just get Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker? Would we really care that much if he appears as an old man when he's supposed to be like 30? I think most of us might be so happy that he's back as Luke that we just ignore that he's now taking arthritis medication to help with his lightsaber swings. Fine, that may not be that logical. But also, look at movies nowadays. We live in the age of de-aging. If Disney can fork over the money to make Samuel L. Jackson look like a young Nick Fury for a whole movie, why can't they just do the same for Luke? Because really, what's more important? A massive CGI de-aging budget for Mark Hamill? Or the satisfaction for Star Wars fans everywhere? I know the right answer. The fan favorite Supernatural just wrapped up a historic 15 season run, which means its actors are now in search for more work. So why not we let the show's resident angel Castiel trade in his wings for a shiny new lightsaber? Yes, Misha Collins is a little bit outside the age range that would make sense for Luke in the Mandalorian timeline, but come on, that could totally work, right? Misha Collins could both capture the fun, innocent side of Luke that we all fell in love with, but also could totally deal with the darker side of his struggle to rebuild the Jedi Order. That's a big weight to carry, and requires an actor with a bit of experience behind him. I fight certain deadly threats to humanity. Plus, if Misha Collins joined the Star Wars universe, then Star Wars fans and Supernatural fans can start co-mingling with one another even more. Can you imagine all the Castiel slash Luke Skywalker cosplay? I know, I know, not the most important thing, but still a factor. Thomas Brody Sangster has had a steady presence in Hollywood over the years. Starting out as the cute kid in Love Actually, as well as the voice of Ferb in Phineas and Ferb. Brody Sangster's young adult years were spent starring in things like Game of Thrones and the Maze Runner franchise. But the actor is probably best well known now as the chess genius Benny in the 2020 phenomenon The Queen's Gambit. With all that under his belt, could the 30 year old play the most famous Jedi in the galaxy? I think maybe. Sure, Brody Sangster would have to put on maybe a little weight, and the makeup team could play around a bit with some prosthetics to get the look right, but he has that boyish charm with just enough grit that would serve his version of Luke Skywalker pretty well. One thing that's going to be extremely important for Luke Skywalker is charisma and charm. So why not let Stranger Things breakout Joe Keery have a chance at the part? His Steve Harrington was originally slated for a much smaller role in the Netflix hit, but through Keery's fantastic hair and innate likability, I'm stealthy, I like a ninja. He found himself earning a much more integral part of the show going forward. Do you think he could bring that same level of energy over to the Star Wars universe? Because it's going to take a lot of work for any actor to win over Star Wars fans when it comes to a new actor being Luke. So, the person better be one heck of a charmer. What'd I tell you? Ninja. If there was anyone who could bring something new to the role that wouldn't make me upset in a way where I would think they're ruining the character, I think it could be Joe Keery. 
Wes Bentley is the kind of actor that you see around a lot, but might take you a second to place his name. He's given solid performances in The Hunger Games, Interstellar, American Horror Story, and most recently stars on the TV show Yellowstone. The point is, he's been around a lot, but it feels like he's just waiting for that one game-changing role to launch him into the A-list status. What about Luke Skywalker? I think he has the talent overall and could play a Luke that's grown up a bit since defeating the Empire. You might need to slap a blonde-ish wig on him, possibly have him put in some contacts, which seems like a lot of work. But then you remember all the other prosthetics the other characters wear sometimes, and you realize contacts aren't that big a deal. Dustin Milligan earned a lot of love for his portrayal as happy-go-lucky veterinarian Ted Mullins in Schitt's Creek. And now, I think he could make the jump to a galaxy far, far away. We haven't seen Milligan stretch his acting chops that much, but I think he would be the perfect type of person to take over the Luke Skywalker role. He's charming, he's likable in a puppy dog sense, and then can turn around and take a picture that makes him look like a rugged lumberjack. Plus, have you seen him impersonate his fellow cast members of Schitt's Creek? Well, uh, if we could get everyone together. The dude has some talent with impersonations, so he could probably mimic a little of Luke's mannerisms and voice inflection. Cole Sprouse surprised everyone with his strong acting chops in CW's super trashy yet fun hit Riverdale. For those of us who grew up with Cole as that little kid from Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, seeing him stretch a bit as an adult has been a lot of fun. And it's that type of intensity and sly cockiness that I think could have Cole pull off a very unique version of Luke Skywalker. He looks a little younger than Mark Hamill did in Return of the Jedi, but in actuality, he's 28 years old, which is almost the perfect age for Luke in the Mandalorian timeline. This one sounds like it would cause a lot of backlash, but just picture it for a second. Okay, maybe picture it for a few seconds. Ah, uh, do you still hate it? Dan Stevens is an actor with tremendous range and movie star good looks. After breaking out in Downton Abbey, he starred in such beloved projects like The Guest and the TV show Legion. He also was the titular Beast in the live-action Beauty and the Beast, and I'm sure Disney is itching to continue working with this up-and-comer. Though, is he perhaps too handsome to play Luke? No offense to Mark Hamill or anything, but Luke just always felt like the everyday man instead of the movie star, you know? Either way, I do think Dan Stevens has the talent to make this work. If we see Luke in The Mandalorian, we're gonna catch him at an interesting point in his life. He looks like he'll be the calm and zen-like Jedi Master who wants to rebuild the Jedi Order in the right way. And I think someone like Wyatt Russell could capture that quality really well. Even though he's great at playing a soldier in things like Overlord and the upcoming Falcon and Winter Soldier show, he has a really interesting laid-back quality to a few of his roles, and that calmness might be the exact thing this version of Luke needs at this stage in his life. What do you think? Do you think Luke should appear in The Mandalorian? And if so, who should play him? Or do you think Luke should stay out of Mando's business for now? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and be sure to hit that big like and subscribe button for more fun Star Wars content like this. Thanks for watching Screen Rant, see you next time.